This podcast is a quest for well-being, a quest for a meaningful life through the exploration of fundamental truths, enlightening ideas, insights on physical, mental, and spiritual health. The inspiration is love. The aspiration is to awaken new ways of thinking that can lead us to a new way of being, being well. Welcome to Body, Mind, and Soul Healing Conversations. There are five factors for growth that are essential elements of overall health and wellness. Among them are nutrition, hormones, sleep, stress, and immunity. These five factors directly affect the body's growth, development, healing, and disease-fighting abilities. In order to maintain optimal health, vitality, and height, we must understand and manage these five factors. Providing energy and nutrients to the body is the cornerstone of physical and mental health. The hormones are responsible for maintaining homeostasis, or the body's equilibrium. Getting enough sleep is crucial to resting, repairing, and restoring the body. The release of stress hormones can interfere with proper functioning, which is why it is imperative to manage stress. As a final point, immunity is the body's natural defense mechanism. Valeria interviews Christina Collins. She started her journey in health and wellness while on a journey towards self-love. Holding a yoga certification and having experience working with young girls and troubled youth is a passion of hers. She now uses her platform working in media to inspire and help build self-esteem in other young women and youth. While at Spectrum Networks at Bay News 9 in Tampa, Florida, she worked on several exciting projects, including a news series exploring Florida's social justice stories called Justice for All, Cofield producing the Epiphany Celebration, and more. Now, joining the True Height team as a brand and media rep, she is using her experiences, story, and passion for health and wellness to encourage others to prioritize their own and their children's health. Meet Christina at trueheightvitamins.com. Here's the interview with Christina Collins. In your own words, who is Christina Collins? Well, Christina Collins is a newly formed publicist. She is a yoga instructor, meditator, believer of all good things and wellness. How do you define or how would you describe what wellness is, Christina? Um, I would describe wellness as an ongoing practice. It's not something that you wake up one day and you're like, oh, I'm all better. I'm well. It's something that you have to really put thought behind. And it's really a daily practice and almost like a ritual, just making sure that you're taking care of all aspects of your mind and body. I love this experience based kind of assessment instead of just believing anything. So what is to be successful to you these days? And what is happiness? How is happiness connected with success? Yeah, so um, that's actually a great question. So previously, before I joined um, Otter PR and the True Height Children's Vitamin Team, I was a journalist and I remember going through school for so many years, like, this is my goal. This is what's going to make me happy. Um, This is what I want to achieve. And as soon as I got in it, I was like, oh my goodness, this is absolutely so stressful and Every day, it's like I'm almost like struggling to go to work. I'm not taking care of my body. Um, And it did get to a point where I was equating success with happiness. I told myself, if I leave this job, I'm not successful. And if I'm not successful, I'm not happy. And it did take me a long time to be like, you know what? Like your body comes first, wellness comes first. And if that means that you have to leave a career that you always saw yourself in, that is okay because there are so many different paths in life and you really just have to be open-minded to choosing a new path and seeing how it goes because life is ever-changing and you just have to be able to 
go with the flow. Yeah. How did you come to these understandings? They're deep. Do, do you have spiritual practices? Or Yeah, I have to ask that question. I can't help it. <laughs> no, no worries. Yeah. Um, if, to be honest, a lot of self-reflection, a lot of, you know, looking within, a lot of meditation. Um, and it's hard. I think a lot of people kind of assume that, like, if you meditate, you just sit down and, like, your thoughts will go away. No. They never do go away. Um, you just learn how to calm them. So for me, it's really just having that practice of centering myself. And when I feel like I'm going too far off the deep end or I'm worrying too much, I need to really reevaluate and seeing where those worries come from and really just kind of rooting myself back in. I do have the knowledge that you are a certified yoga teacher. So that's huge practice for health and wellness. And of course, the uncovering of truth, self kind of inquiry so we can we know who we are. When it comes to self-love, you did mention in your bio that caught my attention. Let me read this. So it says, Christina Collins started her journey in health and wellness while on a journey towards self-love. <clears throat> so talk to me for a moment about the idea of self-love and self-care. Are they one and the same from your perspective? I do believe. I think that if you're taking care of yourself, that is the biggest form of love. Um, for me, as a kid, I struggled with weight. I struggled with height. I was always the smallest person in my class, height and weight wise. So I did struggle a lot with self-love and just being able to say, hey, you know what? You don't look like the other kids and that's okay. Not ev not everybody is cookie cutter shape. Um, and it took a long time to get to that understanding. So for me, it has always been if I am taking care of myself, that is the first step into self-love. Did you have mentors along the way, aside from your yoga teachers, or were they people who helped you to go deeper and understand, have these understandings that you have just now? I find them to be very clear and profound. So am I kind of assuming that you learned that from a mentor or this is something that you uncover on your own? Um, it is a combination of like self, self-reflecting and self-thought, but I did have mentors, especially when I did make the big move, um, coming down to Florida, not knowing anybody and going into news. I did have one mentor in news who definitely took me under his wing and taught me like, you know what, like you're more than just a journalist. You are a person and you should be able to take care of yourself and still stand up for what you believe in at the same time. Yeah. I love that. It really helps, doesn't it, Christina, to have, um, wise people around us. Would you say that that is part of um, self-love, having positive people around us? Oh, most definitely. I mean, I am a strong believer that the energy that brings with certain people into your environment, it can affect the way that you think, the way that you act, the way that your body functions. So for me, like if I can help it, I love to have that aura of positivity, um, but not even just an aura of positivity, just people that you know ca that care about you. Because there are going to be days where you are not positive and your person that you're with are not, is not positive or is having a rough time. Um, it's human nature. But having people that really and truly care about you in your circle, it's, it's really another step of self-love. And another open question is about the purpose of the human experience. What do you think that is? I think that the purpose of the human experience is to try to really do the most we can out of life. I mean, we're here for a short, short period of time. And I think that a lot of us struggle with the fact that I need to fit as much as I can that seems as successful as it can be in this short period of time that I am on earth. Um, and that's either materialistic things or status quos. Um, but for me, it has always been about a little bit more about the simple things like, you know, what's going to make me happy while I'm still here on this planet? How can I help out people 
that need my help or need my guidance and vice versa. How can I reach out to other people that can help me along this journey? Um, It really is a give and take, um, but there is a balance to everything. I love that answer, though. It always goes back to that kind of helping ourselves, of course, to grow and then helping others, expanding on that. Such a beautiful circle kind of to watch even within my own life and see other people like yourself doing that. Another question I have for you is, yeah, I'll ask you this one. I have too many questions, open questions, but I'll ask this one. (laughs) At this time, what do you feel is the world's greatest need? I think that the world's greatest need right now is just access to proper food and nutrition. I think that when it comes to having that form of self-love, you can you can exercise, you can meditate, but it is really super important to know what you're putting in your body. Um, I can tell you right now that, you know, my time as a yoga teacher, especially back in North Carolina, I did a lot of teaching in schools with young girls and a lot of them just didn't have access to nutritional food, didn't have access to supplements, didn't have the knowledge of what they should be eating as well, Um, especially if they were located in an area that was considered a food desert. Um, And, you know, if there's no resources around for parents to have access to, for students to have access to, for teachers to have access to, um, I think that's where the root of the problem that we see now within schools and like a lot of health problems that adults see later on in line starts. So speaking of nutrition, I want to mention that you are, besides being a certified yoga teacher, you're also a True Height brand and media representative. So part of the conversation today, it is about that, how yoga and natural supplements can benefit not just teenagers and kids, because I know it helps them with the growth development phases, but also everyone. I would love to hear from you about the ingredients. What ingredients in true height supplements and their products and how it can help us with nutrition, stress, sleep, hormones, and immunity? Because I see all these five components there. Yeah, of course. So, I mean, I think one of the, my favorite ingredients in this product is ashwagandha. Um, and you know, if you are in the, in like the yoga fitness wellness realm, you know, that ashwagandha, it is one of the best components for stress relief. Um, I do believe that you can be doing all these things, but if you're really stressed out, if you are, have really high stress levels, that can cause a slew of problems. And especially if your child is stressed out, ashwagandha is great for kids. Um, Just being able to relieve that stress, whether they're studying, they're playing sports, they have a big exam. um, All those things can really affect how you sleep, how you eat, and, you know, your development within your body, which all those components are so important for growing and really just maintaining a healthy body. Ashugunda. Oh, that's an interesting name. Of course, I'm familiar with, I take Ashugunda too. And that was because my husband, he actually introduced that to me as a supplement not long ago. It was about, I would say, four months ago, five months ago. He was using that for his own hormones to raise testosterone. And then he said, oh, this is good for women too. And then you're saying now that's good for kids too. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. And what are the other ingredients in true height products that can help us with immunity, kind of helping us to get less sick? Vitamin C, that would be the ingredient or are there others? Yeah, so there's calcium, there's vitamin D, um, there's L-theanamine. So there's a lot of different um, vitamins within the supplements that can help out when it comes to like making sure your kid is not catching the flu, um, you know, RSV is going around in schools, uh, is COVID is still a huge issue. So making sure that your child's immune system is built up is at the utmost importance, especially with kids, most of them being back in school in person. 
Are there any other ingredients that you'd like to mention? I know I had the list, but I didn't copy and paste it here in front of me. What are the, I know it helps with hormones, which it's funny, everything's connected. Once you reduce stress, then automatically the hormones become balanced. Is that correct, Christina? It is actually, yeah. Hormones and stress are really tied together. And I think one of the good ingredients or great ingredients that is involved with their protein shakes is zinc. So zinc helps children that have a deficiency in it. Um, It helps with that growth hormone, the pituitary gland. So a lot of those things are kind of tying together. They're triggering when a child is growing and if you're deficient in one of them, it can really affect how tall you grow or how much weight you gain, how your bones form. So it is, that's why I mentioned it's for children, but also would you recommend that everyone takes it or this is specific formulated for children and teenagers? While this is like specifically geared towards teenagers and children, I would honestly recommend it for any adults that have any kind of bone deficiencies too, especially as you get older, you might have osteoporosis that runs in my family. Um, And it's even worse if you have family members that can't consume dairy. Um, So those supplements really do help out with that. Talk to me about yoga. Did you teach those young girls uh, back in uh, North Carolina? Did you teach them yoga? I did. I did. It was um, it was definitely my highlight of my time in North Carolina, um, being able to go into these classrooms, especially going into like the inner city uh, classrooms where like a lot of these resources, a lot of these meditation guides were really needed. Um, it was amazing. I would go during exam period. Um, I would definitely go when they would have like a girl's class or a guy's class and just being able to show them super simple moves that they can do or even at their desk. I think a lot of people assume that yoga has to be you roll your mat out and you get on your mat and you do a 60 minute practice and you're done. Uh, You can do yoga at your desk. You can do yoga in your bed. You can do yoga anywhere. That is so true. I agree. And I have I have my mats everywhere in my house. <laughs> Every room. I do too. <laughs> yeah, it is a mat. But I don't need a mat. So you're right. We don't need a mat really to perform those. Um, it, not just the moves, the asanas, but also the breathing. Uh, the breathing exercise is so powerful. And the meditation, of course. A question that comes to mind is, did you see the results from teaching them yoga Were you able to see the difference between the before and after, per se, in their mental health and physical health? I did. I did. You know, it was I think I saw it the most with like the meditation and the breathing exercises, especially when you're dealing with young children and they're getting frustrated. They don't know how to express their words very well. Um, And that's that's normal. That is something that a lot of children experience and having that method, especially for teachers to be like, hey, step to the side, take a couple deep breaths, you know, reflect on what's going on. And when you've calmed down, come back and talk to me Um, instead of letting things escalate. And I did see a difference with some of the kids I was working with and seeing that they went from being extremely reactive to, you know, let me reflect on my actions before I get myself in more trouble. I think some schools, they actually, they have integrated yoga as class, but I'm not, it's not all schools and probably not public schools, right, Christina? I don't have a lot of information about that, but is that something that you have actually tried to do as an act of it? Yeah, I've tried. Um, I see that now that I have left that state, that I see them integrating a lot of like health and wellness classes and not just like the uh, usual like sex ed or the um, kind of like, oh, like regular health classes. I've seen them having the options of like, okay, you have gym, you have dance, but you also have like a stretching class and wellness class. And, you know, I think even starting that small, or even incorporating that in your physical ed as a like a, a section in your lesson plan, it will see such great results. I'm glad you mentioned that too, that it was not really, you didn't see a lot of um, major 
results. I'm sure it changes the physiology every time we I do practice meditation or the breathing exercise, it changes everything. But we can see clearly how the mind becomes so much more focused when we engage in those exercises, in those activities. Do you also take this supplement? Um, I know I don't want to spell here your age <laughs> on air, but um, do you also benefit from these supplements, Christina, these days, the protein shake and gummies? I do. I do, definitely. Um, you know, and I'm I'm definitely not shy of my age. So me um, being a year away from di- uh, 30 years old, I definitely see the differences um, in my body, definitely. So I feel like these supplements have helped me, um, especially with my sleep, because, you know, being being in your late 20s, you know, these are like your most active, you know, nose to the grind. You're trying to like take care of your body, take care of your wellness, but also pursue your career. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I find that like if I'm not taking some sort of supplement I or eating healthy, yeah. It doesn't have to be a supplement because um, right. I am the same way where I have to train myself that it's OK if you don't take your vitamins today. Um, right. Yeah. You know, if you have a healthy meal, if you have a good smoothie, if you have something that's nourishing, you, that is OK. Um, you don't have to come down hard on yourself. Um, but I do notice that when I do eat right and I do take my supplements, I do feel good. Yeah, it makes such a huge difference. And I wonder Mm -hmm. why so many teenagers and young people, young human beings, children, teenagers, really, they don't see that because it's very obvious to us, right? It's obvious to you and to me, too. When we eat something that's not healthy, it doesn't feel right. So I wonder why so many teenagers, they keep eating like burgers and all these fast foods. And don't they feel (laughs) the effects of that? (laughs) Yeah, right. It's a question that I often ask myself. No, I mean, that's a that's a great question. And um, I think I have to take it back to when I was in school. Um, and I have to think about, OK, what was I feeling at that point? And I think about it and I'm like, man, I think I felt like I was invincible. Yeah, um, uh, right. And then I hit my age now and I'm just like, nope, I am not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you see, <laughs> as we go older. Uh, so we can only see the effects of that with age, with time. You didn't see that when you were younger. You didn't feel, right? Because uh, you're very young, so you're not really aware of the effects of the food. Not yet. Yeah, not yet. But, you know, I did have friends that were my age that did see the effect from the food they were eating and the lifestyle they were living, even at a young age, it really depends on your body and how it handles it. Um, so, and I, I don't know whether like teenagers that are experiencing those issues, um, from the diet that they are currently eating, if they still believe that, Oh, I'm invincible. Like this will, this will fade. This will go away. Like, you know, my body will fight it off. Um, or if it's just a lack of access to those nutritional and like really good foods for your body. So, yeah, I do remember when I was young eating everything. Uh, and this is more carbohydrates because I'm from Brazil. So we, the food's different. It tends to be more natural in that sense. Rice and beans and then the, the chicken or the meat, whatever, the vegetable. So it's not like I wasn't I didn't grow up with burgers, but or fast food or fried foods or anything like that. But I remember eating a lot of that, uh, the rice and beans, a lot of rice and beans, and just not gaining any weight. And now if I do it, I'm in serious trouble. Like I see it right away. It's incredible how how it works. <laughs> it's kind of funny, but it affects us. The aging, it's an interesting concept. Yeah, it definitely is an interesting concept. Like I, I completely understand where you're coming from. I grew up, um, I'm Afro-Latina, so grew up in a Dominican and Puerto Rican household right. and all we <laughs> ate was rice and beans. Mm, and now yeah. actually mm. I can't eat rice like that. Um, it makes me a little bit sick. Um, so yeah, it's crazy how the body changes as we age. And more incredible to me is that you are aware of it because I know people like in my country in Brazil, that they are not aware of it. They keep eating. Like my father, I think my mother, my mother's a little bit better, but my father, he's, he eats everything. Mm-hmm. Like he doesn't really think about it. He just eats it. And then, he, of course, he got sick so many times, had surgeries and all that. So is that that lack of awareness? 
that's to me, it's crucial for human beings to become more aware of everything, not just what we eat, but also the way we think, our thought patterns, and then, of course, the people around us, and not, not just the people, but the media also, TV, social media, and all that. So we need to be very aware of w what we are in contact with. And uh, speaking of awareness, I'll ask you an open question. What is one, if there's one message or one advice you would give to young people these days, what would that be? I, the advice I would give is like, always listen to your body. Your body tells you when something is not good, when something is good for you. Um, don't ignore the signs. Um, if you feel like something isn't right, if you feel like something that you're eating, something you're doing, something that you're thinking is hurting your body in some way, don't be afraid to reach out. I, I know that a lot of a lot of us when we're younger, we do believe that like, oh, this is a phase. This will pass. Um, I'm invincible. I know my body is stronger than this. And a lot of the times that's how we ignore a lot of the signs. So don't be afraid to ask that question. Um, I always used to tell us there is no stupid questions. There, it, it doesn't exist. I'd rather you ask than keep it to yourself. Yeah, that's a beautiful suggestion and advice that, gosh, I wish everyone would listen to it and really take with them for life and practice that. So it's that this beautiful idea of coming together as a community, seeing other people, trusting that other people can help us to guide us to that more a healthier place. And that's um, something that unfortunately it's still in the works. A lot of us, especially teenagers, young people, I have heard that they keep everything to themselves and then they become depressed. And then with that, a lot of other problems might arise. So that's a beautiful advice, Christina, to ask for help, to be aware first of the way they are their feeling, their body, the way it responds to the outside world and also the foods that they eat. And then, of course, their thoughts, emotions. And then if we need, just open up and ask for help. That's such a beautiful advice. That's for all of us, really, human beings, um, not just teenagers. Believe me, us adults, can we can hold back too. <laughs> oh, and, definitely. Right, don't we, <laughs> as humans? <laughs> so it's beautiful. That's a beautiful invitation to be open, right, to be open to life. So my ending questions, but before I ask those ending questions, would you like to add anything else that you left unsaid for today? Um, you know, I I think the last thing I would add is there are resources out there. Don't be afraid to check out your county page or city page. Um, a lot of the times you can find those free resources. If you're looking for more information on how to eat healthy, um, how to get active, uh, how to start a yoga practice, how to start some sort of fitness. There's so many materials and resources out there. Um, don't, once again, don't be afraid to inquire and ask. There are so many helping hands out there that would love to get you started on your journey. Yeah. Thank you for saying that too. That that's not always the case of paying a coach or mentor. Uh, they can mm -hmm. also, they, they can find that information on the internet, right? For free. Mm -hmm. What do you love most about being in the human body? I love that it's a never it's it's never ending journey. You know, I feel like I'm learning something new about myself, if not every day, every week. And as I get older, it's like I'm learning to adapt to this new skin, this new body, the new ways I move, the new ways I think. Um, and, you know, I'm a big proponent that like I I love the fact that I'm getting older because I feel like I'm getting wiser and, like I'm, you know, I'm getting better. <laughs> yes, right. Yes. See, that's beautiful. That's wisdom, maturity. That's so important. A lot of times as young people, we don't value that because we don't even know what that is. But then as we get older, we see it's almost like a beautiful trade, isn't it? It's okay for the body to get old, to slow down. But then at that level, I call the mindful, wellness, mental state, we feel so much better. It's connected to self-trust and that inner confidence. I love that. Like listening to you, I hear that, that confidence, that inner trust. <laughs> so it's really beautiful to see. Thank you, Christina, for being you. 
<laughs> Thank you. <laughs> what three experiences you wish everyone to have before they lose the body, before they die in general? Hmm. I, before we, before we leave this planet, I hope that everybody experiences some, some sort of true love and it doesn't have to be with another individual. It can be a practice. It can be a mindset. It can be a new passion. Um, I'm a big proponent that true love is not just meant for the human body. It, it's meant for, you know, an experience. It's meant for a passion. It's meant for doing. It doesn't have to be with another individual. Um, I the second thing I would love for everybody to experience is honing some sort of craft. I I find it that when I talk to many people, especially a lot of people my age, they are almost ashamed or shy of talking about something that they're super passionate about. And I'm a very big proponent of like, if it's something that you find so much joy in loving, be proud of it. You know, it could be the knitting club you started. It could be the model airplanes you build. Um, having that joy and passion just makes every day a little easier. So true. Yeah, it gives us purpose and meaning, right? So true. And I know you have and one to I, go. <laughs> we have one more to go. Um, I think the last one that I, you know, love to hit hard on is making sure that we are really interacting with so many different mindsets. Um, I do find, especially coming from the background that I come from, it's almost like a, it's almost like a fear of learning about something different, um, meeting people that are different from you. And I think the only way that we can grow as human beings is learning about other human beings and learning about other cultures and practices and having that global awareness. I think it makes us better people. It makes us communi be uh, communicate better. It makes us live together better. And it makes us just understand each other better. So it's almost like you are tuning in this universal wisdom that's already here, available to all of us, but not all of us kind of uh, aware of that. So it's really, really beautiful, the things you say. Thank you so much, Christina, for sharing your heart <laughs> with me today. <laughs> Thank you for allowing me to. Oh, that's beautiful. So before we say goodbye for today, what is the best way or the best place to find you or to find more information about what you do and what you represent? Of course, um, you can definitely check out for True Height Vitamins, their Instagram page. You can find them at uh, trueheight.com. And really, for more of what I do, I mean, you can visit, of course, um, Chrissy, Chrissy the Journalist. Um, I post yoga information there as well. Um, and I also post more about supplements and guided practices and a little bit of my lifestyle too. But really, um, I do encourage everybody to, of course, check out True Height, check out more about different supplements that fit your body, of course, um, and really check out learning about different wellness practices. Mm, yes, I'll have those two websites, your personal website, uh, professional personal, and then also mm -hmm. True Hide website on the podcast profile. Thank you so much again for your presence here today, Christina. We'll talk soon. Bye for now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening. To learn more about Christina Collins and her work, please visit trueheightvitamins.com. To learn more about this podcast, please visit fitforjoy.org slash podcast. Thank you again for listening and bye for now.